Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And, and yes, this is an Apple Pencil. And the reason I'm holding this is because this video is about the new update to Luminar Mobile, which is update 2.2, which incorporates the ability to adjust raw files. That's a big deal and I'm super happy about it. So I'll be using this Apple Pencil on my iPad here and sharing my screen and walking through a quick demo of how I'm using this tool. Now, this is out today. If you don't have it, you can get it at the link below. But what I want to do is walk through a demo and let's just get into it. Uh, there are also a few minor changes to the, the UI, but of course the big thing is the support for raw files. Uh, you will notice on this right hand side here, the tools, Accent AI or Enhance AI is at the top, but I like to start with develop raw, especially with the raw file because you're taking advantage of that raw data, right? In the past, it was uh, effectively not utilizing all that raw data because it didn't support true raw full, uh, format. Now it does, and so that gives you, the reason that why this is important is because it gives you more flexibility and leeway in editing. You're less likely to get artifacts or color banding and things like that in your images when you're editing a raw file instead of like a JPEG. So a uh, photo like this, I'm gonna just go through and uh, brighten that. I'm gonna pull down the highlights and whites, and by the way, if you haven't seen this app before, you can see that it's pretty cool. Uh, they kind of reimagined and reinvented uh, the dials and the knobs and all that kind of stuff to make to make it just cool, I guess, uh, is the best way to say it. So it's a lot of fun. I love using the app. Um, I'm going to also lift the shadows a little bit because it's, it's pretty dark. This was a landscape shot at sunrise in Colorado, and I was trying to manage the highlights, which worked. Uh, but as a result, you get pretty dark shadows, right, if you're kind of uh, doing it that way which is normally how I shoot. And so I've now brightened the photo and I brought down the highlights and brought up the shadows. Uh, and now I want to go into contrast. That's generally my approach, highlights and shadows, exposure if I need to, and then contrast. And this little squiggly line here, if you haven't seen the app before, is contrast. You can kind of see what it's doing to the photo. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of bump in contrast. By the way, this update is applicable to iPad or iPhone uh, 2.2, Luminar Mobile 2.2. The uh, slight differences based on the screen real estate um, are that this contrast slider is its own separate tool in uh, the iPhone version and the section below it which is temperature and tint is also a separate tool in the iPhone version I'm just on the iPad today but just keep that in mind it'll look slightly different but it's all the same tools um, if you're using an iPhone I prefer the iPad because I like the bigger uh, screen of course now the next thing is to just drag the uh, the warmth a little bit to the right, and I'm gonna drag the tint a little bit to the right as well. All I'm trying to do is uh, bring this to life, make it a bit more vibrant, exciting sunrise. And it really was, it was a gorgeous sunrise. One of the best I've ever seen, and I love the shots. I got a bunch from this morning. I was pretty happy about that. Uh, but now that I've done develop raw, by the way, you can always click the little uh, radio button next to the word uh, that describes the tool, and it'll turn it off. So if you wanna see the before and after, you can do that, and then you can just click the uh, the word again, in this case, develop uh, raw, and that will close the tool. Uh, you'll also notice there's a dot next to it, and that dot indicates the tool has been used. So in a minute, you'll see dots in quite a few places. Uh, Accent AI is at the top, but since we now have true raw file support, I want to start in develop raw and manage the light there first before I go do something like Accent AI. Uh, but I love in, uh, Enhance or Accent AI, uh, and I use it on all my photos, and I'm going to use it here, of course, because it does a great job. Now, um, it, it is raw file support, so you're taking advantage of that rich data, but there's some things that you might expect uh, that you don't have, right? You don't have like color profiles or DCP files. You don't have that uh, camera profiles, I should say. So you don't have that right now, and there's also no masking. So the way I'm using the app is like an augmentation, an add-on, a supplement, a complement, if you will, to Luminar Neo. I'm not using it in place of Luminar Neo, because it doesn't have what I mentioned before, it doesn't have layers, things like that. The way I'm using it is, it's great for like on the go edits. Sometimes maybe you just wanna travel with less gear. iPad is great for that as opposed to a laptop. And you just wanna do some quick edits on the fly. You could airdrop photos uh, onto your iPad and then do some quick edits and still have that rich raw data. And then share it socially or with family. Uh, and then you know do a full complete end to end edit with masking, et cetera, when you get home. Um, you know, with, uh, with your raw files on your full copy of Luminar Neo. So that's kind of how I use it as kind of a, a supplement to the, uh, uh, the main editing app, uh, Luminar Neo. Uh, I'm now going to go into saturation, and this is a, this is a cool one. You can kind of see as you move around kind of what's happening. It's saturation and vibrance. I'm going to go up and to the right. I'm going to get a bit more vibrant here. I do like my colors. And you can see as I move that in the top 
above the photo, you could see, let me hold that again. You can see where it says vibrance and saturation and what the numbers are. Uh, sometimes I find it a little hard to be crazy accurate with a pencil. Sometimes it works a little bit better with just a finger. Uh, so uh, regardless, uh, you know, do what works best for you. I'm going to do something like that. And then Structure AI, I'm going to close that tool. I'm going to go to Structure AI. And you can increase or decrease structure. I'm actually going to decrease and create a little bit softer overall image. That's just something I like to do on my landscapes. I don't always want a crunchy, sharp landscape. Sometimes I like the kind of dreamier, soft look. And especially in lower light, like this photo was taken, just that softer light, I think, uh, yields uh, or looks good, I think, with a softer overall look as opposed to a really crunchy one. Now, the next couple of tools I'm going to skip over. There's Relight AI, which you're probably familiar with this. This allows you to kind of shift light around. I can just show you real quick. Uh, that would be like foreground or background, that sort of thing. Vignette's a vignette. And then, of course, I'm going to skip skin and body AI because, of course, that's for portraits, and this is not one. But I am going to stop in the landscape category. It's got three tools that I really like. First one's Foliage Enhancer, which really makes that grass and trees green. I don't actually want that in this photo, so I'm going to skip it. But the next one is the kind of the atmosphere effects, which if you go to, uh, up, it's it's adding fog, and if you bring it down, it's essentially dehaze. And so I'm going to go kind of lower on the dehaze because I like that look, and it's kind of helping some of that color and light uh, adjust and kind of cut through. And then this is Golden Hour, which is one of my favorite tools in Luminar. I use it all the time, and I just think it looks good. You can see what it does. Like, I don't need to go that high, but it does a great job of taking the, the colors that are already warm and kind of golden and give them a nice pop of additional warmth. So it's a good little kick, if you will, on a, a sunrise or sunset or Golden Hour type photo, which is obviously what this is. So I'm going to close that. Uh, the bottom two, details and monochrome, I already kind of mentioned I'm not going to amp up detail, and monochrome, of course, is to make a black and white, which I don't want to do. But I do want to go into curves because it's powerful and it's super useful, uh, and it's a great tool, and it's really nice to have it here as well. I'm going to start here on the, uh, the tone curve, and that's just doing a simple kind of S curve, and all I'm doing is slightly adjusting the light. I'm creating a little bit more contrast with the photo, and you can play around and drop these anchor points kind of anywhere you want. I'm going to move these around a little bit and kind of see what I can do. So something about like that, let me show you the before. There's the before. You can kind of see it's a little bit less contrasty, and the after, now a bit more contrasty. You can adjust that to your heart's content, of course. But the other thing I like is, is that you have the red, the green, and the blue channels. So you can go adjust colors there. I'm going to skip red, but green is great because in this case, I want to add a little bit of that magenta look. If you go this way, that's adding green. I don't want to do that. I'm going to go this way and add a little bit of magenta, just a nudge in that direction. So just a little bit like that. And maybe that's a little bit too much. I might just pull that back a tiny bit. And I'm putting the control point or that dot that I added to the line right in the middle. And that's because that's some midtones. And generally speaking, there's going to be a fair amount of midtones in any image. It's just a good way to kind of have a decent impact across the image without really overdoing it. And then I'm going to pop into blue, and similar things apply here, right? You can go more blue, or you can kind of go more warm, and uh, or yellow, I guess. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, just a tiny bit. And, you know, maybe I'll add a little bit more into the highlights. Uh, and then in the shadows, maybe I'll get down here and add a tiny bit of blue, uh, which is going the other way, right? So bottom line, if I look at curves, you can see the before, it's a fairly dramatic difference. That's why curves is so powerful, but before... And after, and that's a quick demo slash run through of the update, Luminar Mobile 2.2, a slightly different UI. And, it, and again, as I mentioned earlier, there's some, uh, some differences with the, uh, the iPhone version versus the iPad based on screen real estate. But one of the things that's really cool in this upper left corner is you have this uh, undo and redo kind of thing. So you can back up like one move, which is that button. You see that took away the curves and the curves went dark, so to speak. Uh, but then I can redo by hitting that and bringing that back. Uh, the very bottom one is a complete undo all the way back to your original raw file, which I do not want to do. I like this edit and I like this image. And by the way, you can always hold down in the, uh, in the screen with your finger or with the Apple Pencil. And as you hold it down, you'll get the original, right? So and when you let go, so original, uh, holding my finger down. And when I let go, I get my edited image. And that's it for this one. I just wanted to walk through what they've done to update this app. It's really cool. It's really fun. It's really powerful. It's a great enhancement to your workflow, I think, when especially when you're on the go and want to do a quick edit without all the stuff. Like I might spend 20 or 30 minutes on a photo editing kind of like for real, but a quick on the go edit, I could spend five, seven minutes here in the iPad app and just get a great result, share that socially or with family and just say, here's what I'm doing. 
I'll be back soon kind of thing. You know how it goes. So it's always fun to share with, uh, with family and friends when you're on the road. Anyway, that's a walkthrough of this uh, edit with the update to the app. Check it out at the link below if you want to get a copy. And I'll be back soon with more videos, my friend. Uh, you guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Until next time. Adios.